application, right? So we need to understand what exactly the inheritance, right? So now yeah, one comment is coming. Okay, fine. Okay. Now we are going to discuss how to use inheritance in application development, right? Suppose you are going to develop one real kind of application, then how you need to think, how new, how you need to design, how you need to use inheritance in your application that we are going to discuss. So before that, first of all, we need to understand what is inheritance, right? The process of creating a new class from an existing class such that the new class occurs all the properties and the behavior. Properties means data member, right? Behavior means a, a member functions of the existing class is called inheritance, right? The properties or behavior are a transport from which class is called super class or the parent class or the base, base class. Whereas the class which derives the properties and the behaviors from the super class or parent class is called subclass or child class or derived classes, right? So in simple word, we can say that inheritance means to take something that is already made or available. If you have a parent class and inside that parent class, if you have defined some properties, I mean some data member, right? Or if you define some behavior, I mean some member functions or methods, then all those methods are going to be available to the child classes, right? So that child classes can consume the members and properties of the parent class. And that means the parent class, the things are already made. The things are already available in the parent class and in the child class we are just going to use them right and inheritance concept is basically used for code reusability and code changeability right as of now what we are discussing is code reusability there is also a concept called changeability that we will discuss in our coming session right so whenever we are going to discuss method overriding at that time i will show you what is exactly the meaning of changeability and how we can achieve Changeability using inheritance. So what exactly changeability means? You, you define your super class, you define your parent class, one method, and you are providing some functionality. And the child class doesn't want that functionality. Instead, child class want to re-implement that method. That functionality is going to be said as changeability, right? You can change the existing functionality of the parent class under the child class. That is also possible. How it is possible like in parent class you need to define the method as virtual and in child class you need to override that method using the override modifier that we will discuss when we will discuss the method overriding concept right now now come to our main concept how to use inheritance in application development inheritance is something that come into picture not like the middle of the project or middle of the application development Sometimes it comes in the middle of the project development, but generally when we start application development, right? Whenever we whenever we got a new project, right? At the initial stage only we need to decide. We need to decide means we need to decide the database. We need to decide the uh, database means we need to decide the tables. What are the different kind of tables we need for our application? For each table, we can refer to them as one entity, right? And in each entity, what are the column or in each table, what are the properties we need to define, right? Similarly, if you are going to start developing using any kind of programming language or any kind of uh, a framework, then first of all, you need to decide how I am going to define the entities, right? How I'm going to make the relationship between the entities. All these things you need to decide at the initial stage of the application development. Sometimes uh, uh, as a developer or uh, some huge changes comes uh, for our project. So in middle of the application development, sometimes we might uh, change or we might implement the inheritance relationship or we might think about the inheritance. But generally from the initial stage, from the beginning stage or while you are starting the application development, before starting the actual application development, you need to think about the inheritance, right? So how we are going to develop one application, right? So before understanding how we are going to develop an application, we need to understand one term called entity. Right in DBM terminology, in DBM terminology, what is an entity? An entity is something which is associated with a set of attributes. An entity can be a living or non-living object, but anything that is associated with a set of attributes is called entity. Right. If I'm asking you, what is an object? You can say anything that we can see, anything that we can touch, whether it is a living or non-living thing, we can talk that an object. That object, what you are saying. It's nothing but one entity, right? And each object having some properties, having some attributes, right? Similarly, each entity is also associated with a set of attributes, 
right suppose suppose you are going to develop one application right then your application mainly deal with entities yes or no for example you are developing an application for a bank then what are the entities associated with the bank application it's nothing but the customer right the uh, customer the employees right that, that means what whatever you can see inside a bank is nothing but an entity for example for bank let's assume customer is an entity right for example you are developing an application for a school then student will be an entity employee uh, the teacher will be an entity right suppose you are developing application for a business suppose you are having a company then who are the entity the employee is also employee is going to be an entity so every application that we develop uh, is nothing but is going to be a set of entities is going to the application is going to be associated with a set of entity right so now now can we call phone in a uh, phone is an entity yes we can call a phone is an entity it's a non living entity but it can be called as entity why it has some attribute what are the attribute the phone having some uh, the phone is going to be the, uh, some manufacturer company the phone having some model number the phone having price size color weight etc so all these things are nothing but the properties of the phone entity can we call student is an entity yes student is a living entity all the student have some attributes or not the student having the id the name the roll number the registration number the address the phone number right the the branch in, in which is studying all these things are nothing but one one entity right objects are nothing but entity yes objects are nothing but entities only right so these are nothing but entities right can we say employee is an entity yes employee is a living entity so what are the attributes associated with an entity attributes means uh, suppose you want to create one entity for employee then you need to think only now what are the things i need to put inside this entity employee id employee name employee registration id uh, employee job employee qualification employee department employee salary right employee designation all these things you can put inside the employee entity right so whenever you are going to develop any application you need to think what are the entities that are going to be associated with the application right right then then what are the different steps of application development so generally when we are developing an application the process will be as follows step one identify the entities that are associated with the application suppose you are going to develop an application for a school then for school application who are the entities student is an entity teaching staff is an entity non teaching staff also available in in a school so non teaching staff is also an entity so like this you can decide who are going to be the entities for my student application right for this session let assume our entities for our school application is student uh, teaching staff and the non teaching staff right then step two once you identify the entities that are associated for your application then you need to identify what are the attributes right what are the properties of each and every entity right you need to identify the attribute you need to identify the properties suppose suppose you are creating a student entity for student entity you can take id name address phone number class mark grade fees these are nothing but the attributes of student entity right and for teaching staff you can take the attributes like id name address phone designation salary qualification and subject for non teaching staff you can take the attributes such as id name address phone designation salary but for non teaching staff uh, it doesn't matter what is their execution or qualification it doesn't matter uh, it, it there should not be any subject because they are not going to teach anything but they are having department up. on which department this non teaching staff is working who is the manager of that non teaching staff so i'm taking department and manager id as two parameters right so two attribute so the second step that you need to identify is the attributes that are associated with each entity and for our application we are taking these things right now you can uh, for better understanding i'm um, categorize this so this is my student entity this is my teaching staff entity this is my non teaching staff entity and for student entity these are the properties or attribute for teaching staff these are the attributes for non teaching staff these are the attribute and this is nothing but my school application i'm seeing this school application as three entities and i'm seeing each entity with this set of attributes right and once you identify the student once you uh, identify the entities 
And once you identify the attributes associated with each entities, then you need to identify the common attributes and put them in a hierarchical order, right? Now, now in this four, in these three entities, can anybody tell me which are the common attributes in all these entities? Can anybody tell me? ID, ID name, address, phone. Yes, ID, name, address, and phone. That means these four are the common attributes you can see in all the entities. So what I can do is I can create a uh, you need to represent these entities in a hierarchical manner. So what I'm doing, I'm redividing these entities into sub entities. I'm creating an entity called person. And in this person entity, I'm putting all these four attributes, ID name, address, and four. So you can see person, ID name, address, and four. If I'm creating a person attribute, then if I'm creating a student entity, I'm making, and if I'm making an inheritance relationship with the student, then if I'm creating an instance of a student, then all the four attributes, what you have defined in person will also be available in student or not. So in student entity, I'm only putting class mark grade and freeze. So in student, I'm making class mark grade and freeze. And this student is inheriting from the person entity. So this is the hierarchical or you can say hierarchical manner. Now, the student having four properties, person having four properties, but this student is inheriting from person. That means the student not only having these four properties or four attributes, but also having all these four properties, what you have defined inside the portion. That means student having now all the eight properties, right? What you have seen in this diagram, right? Now, now, now coming to this, uh, uh, yeah, we have taken this four into a different entity called portion. Now, now comparing this teaching and non-teaching stuff, uh, forget about the first four properties. Coming to the next four properties, is there any common properties? Yeah, designation and salary. Designation and salary. So what you can do is you can create a new sub entity and in that entity you can put designation and salary, right? And this stuff, uh, I'm, I'm saying this as stuff and I'm inheriting this stuff from this person entity, right? Now, if I'm creating one instance of stuff, then what are the properties available inside this stuff? Inside this tab, six properties are available. What are the six properties or attributes? ID name, address for designation and salary. These six things are available inside this tab. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Now, now coming to this teaching and non-teaching stuff. So what I'm doing in teaching, I'm putting this qualification and subject and non-teaching, I'm putting department name and manager ID. Suppose if I'm creating an instance of a teaching, uh, it doesn't mean that this teaching class having two attributes, qualification and subject. It means that this class having these two properties plus these two properties plus these four properties. Yes or no? Guys? Yes, sir. And this non-teaching stuff, if I'm creating an instance, if I'm thinking in terms of non-teaching stuff, then this non-teaching stuff, not only these two properties, but also these two properties, as well as these four properties. So what you see in this uh, high level diagram, that is also you can view inside this low level diagram. In high level, we have three entities, but in a low level, we have three entities, one, two, and three, but we are not putting all these things inside their respective entities. We are making the hierarchical manner. And this is possible because of inheritance. Tomorrow, a new entity comes into the back picture, that is temporary stuff. What you need to do? You no need to create all the entity. You no need to put all the entities inside the temporary stuff. You just need to create a temporary stuff, which is specific to the temporary stuff. You need to put those uh, uh, attributes inside the temporary stuff, and you need to inherit that temporary stuff from the stuff. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Very yes. clear. Yes. Once you have designed this architecture, once you design the hierarchical. Uh, uh, I, I mean, once you put the common things in a hierarchical manner, then you need to convert this thing into classes. Define the classes that are representing the entities in hierarchical manner, right? So what you can do, you can create one class, right? So what I'm going, I'm just removing these things, right? I'm just removing these things. What I'm doing, I'm creating one class, class called a person. This class person having the properties id name address and phone yes or no now if you want to create a student class 
then what the student class is going to have? This student class is going to have all the rest four properties, and this student class is going to be inherited from the person car. Now, if you look at the student class, then student class not only having these four properties, but also these four properties, right? That means the student class now having eight properties, right? Now you need to create a class called staff, right? So you can create a class called staff and this staff class is inheriting from this portion class. That means this class staff is now having two properties plus four properties. So total six properties are available inside this staff class. Then you need to create two more classes. One is for teaching staff and another is for non-teaching, right? So you can see this is my teaching inherited from the staff. So I can say this is the teaching staff and this is my non-teaching inherited from staff. So I can say it is non-teaching staff. And in teaching, what is specific to teaching that I'm putting here, qualification and subject. For non-teaching, I'm putting department. And